um, interacted with each other from different parts. Um, and I asked my grandmother before she passed away at 92 years old, what did she think about segregation when it was going on? Did she think any of that was good for black people? Her response was absolutely not. She said that it was humiliating, that uh, it was uh, a, a major inconvenience. She said that it was extremely limiting. She said because it wasn't just, oh, you can't drink at this water fountain. There were professions, job opportunities, educational mm -hmm. opportunities that you were locked out of because you were black. And so from that, she she said, absolutely not. It was it was not a good thing. And she would not, not, not like this ever see it return its head. Now, I think what Roger is talking about wouldn't be segregation. It would be more self-sufficiency. Where I, I work in one of the wealthiest cities uh, in Georgia, in, in the suburbs of, of Atlanta in the north suburbs, we have a large Indian population. Those people are fully integrated while at the same time, they have their own stuff. They have their own restaurants, their own grocery stores, um, uh, not so much their own schools because they, they attend most of the uh, public and private schools in the area that are, are run by the dominant culture, but they're so they're integrated um, into society. Well, they even have some in the, in the politics here in, in uh, the north suburbs of Atlanta that, that are uh, in play, holding public office. Now beginning to uh, in, involve themselves in the politics of the country that they're living in. So I think what Roger would more be talking about is, uh, is self-sufficiency or, or, or uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we, I, I mean, we, I, look, in the past, we had forced segregation. We don't have those laws in place today. So today, segregation would be voluntary. Now, would we be more self-sufficient if we voluntarily became segregated? I do think so, because I understand um, your grandmother's point of view, because she's looking at segregation and what was withheld from her due to segregation. So I, I get that total viewpoint because, you know, you know, uh, because I'm not a part of this group, I can have these things. Well, my thing is now that we like I said, we now have hindsight to look at, even though it was forced. So I do believe in a certain aspects, segregation was good because we cling to our own people better. And we more we were definitely more self-sufficient during that time frame because we literally had to be. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Well, I, I mean, no, I, I think from, from a logistical no. standpoint, you, from a logistical standpoint, I mean, it's the women. You know, as, as long as the women are free to do what they want to do, you, you can forget about us becoming socially, re-socially segregated. It's not going to happen. You're not going to be able to create and maintain the order in which people are going to align together and work together and feel obligated to to focus on being with each other because the women are going for self. And if the women are going for self, then it's just whatever the best deal they think they can get at where whatever they got going on in life and whatever they're doing and whatever opportunities that are made available to them. You can't have any kind of segregation in that kind of environment. And I think we underestimate, you know, I, I think most segregation is forced in some way. It is forced by religion. It is forced by law. It is forced by societal mores and et cetera. I don't, I, I, I don't think segregation in and of itself is just something people just are gonna naturally do without some degree of enforcement. Now, in the case of black people, it was external to a large extent, and it was largely because it was hazardous. 
I think if you open up a country to everybody, you know, you're gonna have black men who find in, you know, before I got married, <clears throat> uh, and I think I mentioned this before, uh, or when, you know, around the time I got married or, or got engaged, uh, my, my mother told me, she said she was surprised. And she was like, I just assumed you were gonna, gonna marry a white woman. And I asked her why. And she said, well, I, I just figured a white woman was probably be the best kind of wife for a man like you. And her view was not about me being black and getting a black woman. Her view was, you know, I'm looking at the, the mentality. I'm looking at the, the particular way my son thinks and moves. And it probably would be better if he got with a white woman. And because she was more concerned about me, and my interest in my life and not about maintaining some particular sort of black order that was her view and so i i just i don't i don't buy this notion of of segregating i don't think you can do it in a free and open society and and, and i think it's a kind of a pipe dream where you you think we're gonna be able to benefit from a so-called free society but yet we're gonna strictly segregate ourselves to black people i i, I think g or, or maybe asian ice hot ice said it earlier i think that time has come and gone yeah i mean we ain't i think we should that. ask ask the brothers would you even want to segregate with people like would you even want to Think about that for real. Would you want to have them put us in a place where it's only us and these women that's here now, with all of their kids and shit, nil? Oh, no, 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 absolutely not. But that's, not us. Help us. that's forcing a situation on us again that we don't want. Everything has to be voluntary. That, that, that's the issue with, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not cutting anybody off, am I? No. No, go ahead. Yeah, so look, there's nothing wrong. So this is where I kind of disagree with you a little bit there, Uru. I know I know you're you're smart on a lot of this because you've seen you you kind of were part of here for here for some of the transition between segregation desegregation and kind of how it played out and 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 you probably know a lot of people but me looking at back at it in hindsight I don't have any issues with segregation the only issue I have was how it was enforced and how black people were treated under segregation that's really the issue but uh, people are going to naturally go with people who look like them speak talk act behave eat like them dance like them eat the same foods, have the same tradition, culture, ideology, religion, beliefs, uh, practices, all of that stuff. It's just very natural. And and, and, and the only reason I say that but, is that- But, you say, but you say that uh -huh. naturally because you don't consider, or I, I'm not sure you consider all of what else is going on around that. You know, we say people are gonna naturally do this and that and the other, but usually there are other forces. Very often we're separated initially surely by geography. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Now here's 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 where and, I agree and, with someone. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, this go is, here's where I agree with some of what you guys are talking about. Is that so Roger was talking about working together. So working with other groups, working with other people who are different, I don't see any issue or problem with that. You know, coming together commercially and and, and business enterprise, uh, you know, cutting good deals for yourself and uh, you know, even working with them, even if you're working for them, I suppose. And, and, and to benefit yourself but this thing where once the work is done then you go back to your area and that's where you live eat you know kind of raise your family you know where your kids go to schools see that makes sense to me um and that's if, if we get to that point where we are in society then we'll have a lot less issues and problems and the real reason i say this is that despite the fact that the majority of of u.s society is probably okay with you know what we have now which is integration and uh, people mixing, and then even as it relates to social class, you have a small group of people who are like, no, I don't want it at all. Those are your folks that are causing problems. And I don't want to be, I personally don't want to be around those people, not because I'm scared of them or, or you know, or, or I'm afraid or, or having to interact with them. It's just, I just don't have the time or the interest. I'm not trying to change those people. If they don't want a society where everybody's people, you know, uh, consistent with the laws, and and you know everybody's got kind of got a fair shake and and, and and everything else 
then those people I don't need around me. So I want them people, I want those people away from me. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I see I see my younger male uh, kin, you know, those that do marry, uh, and they, they all have none. They all have none. Why? Me? Yeah, but I mean. Oh, but the, the way I see it, Black Blue. Oh, sorry, go ahead. But, go ahead. But, but what we're talking about is you're, you're saying that a small group of people, yes, because small groups of people live and interact with one another, yes. But can the collective integrate with another collective? No. Segregation is natural. Tribalism is natural. The reason why we as African Americans, I mean, shit, even in Africa, the motherfuckers don't get along, right? Kukuyu. Nigga, they sold us, nigga. They, you gotta exactly. admit, them niggas sold us, nigga. Kukuyus don't get, get along with, uh, Lulz. Lulz have their own little area in Kenya. Kikuyus have another area in Kenya. They don't even marry and fuck with each other like that. Right? So it is natural to segregate. It's natural, man. And the thing about it is, we as African Americans, and this goes back to the point of being destroyed, we don't even have self-fucking pride to discriminate against other people. Yeah, and, and that's why I say I believe in social segregation to a point. Because, like, let's keep it real. The Africans sold us, man. Like, I, right, I feel we this day. Have, we don't have fucking pride enough to be like, or, fuck everybody else if you're not ABOS. We don't well, even think have about pride. it. When you actually learned what happened during slavery, you realized in the whole world that, nigga, there are elite black people. There's Africans who've never been slaves or poor or yeah. none of that shit. There's elite black, there's elite American black people too. Yeah. See what I'm saying? That they family wasn't slaves or poor or none of that shit. And you look at that shit from the lens of, like, well, first off, there's more black people on the whole earth than everybody else. Second off, the shit that we got told flat out was a lie, man. We were lied to. There's always been social groups. There's always been elitists. Like, motherfuckers don't understand that the Egyptians invented the pyramid scheme, nigga. America is based off of Egyptian culture. Same thing as Rome, Greek. All that shit is a pyramid scheme. That's why it's a pyramid scheme. Why do you think Egypt failed, nigga? The same shit that's going on today. All of that shit failed the same way because it's the same civilization. Over and over and over and over again. We repeat in the same cycle. We call it Western culture now. They stole it from them people who was Africans who did it before too. We were that's why we got stories of Babylon and what happens when you let bitches get out of control. So we already got all the stories and all the history. At this point, we need something new. We need to come up with a different form of living, a different form of politics. I say end all the fucking countries and make this shit one big country. And that way, everybody can be treated somewhat the same. If, if all the laws are the same in every land, all the money is the same, everything is the same, you're going to find out a lot right then and there. But until we get to that point as a civilization, we're going to keep repeating this shit. Build a multi-ethnic culture, that shit going to fall. Because it's going to be the same shit over and over again. Well, it, it kind of goes back to what I was just saying, because like what you, what, you, what you just said sounds nice. The problem is that there's always going to be a group of people who say, you know what, hey, G, everything you just said sounds great. But you know what? I disagree. You know what? I'm going to force conditions to make sure that however you want it to play out, it ain't going to play out that way. And I'm going to stay on top. This, this is where I this is where I agree with you know, Asia Nice here a little bit is that, you know, you got to practice some discrimination to some extent. All right. Now, you don't have to be a, you don't have to be an a-hole. All right. You don't have to mistreat people. But there's nothing wrong with getting your group of people together and actually working towards your own benefit while interacting and, and working with other groups. There's nothing wrong with that. That's really what I would like to see. Uh, that would be a better society. Uh, and because we have so many different racial groups and understand all these other groups have already done this, by the way. Think about Little Italy. Little Italy uh, they call it Little you know, there's a There's a Chinatown in almost every major city. 
um, you know, uh, even among immigrant states, they segregate themselves. Uh, exactly. So there's nothing wrong with okay, that. It's just, but, it's just but, but, when, when but, but Asian, it, Asian mm -hmm. women go, go ahead, date out and marry out more than everybody else. You know, or or comparable only to that of maybe Latino women. You know, so I mean, we talk about these communities, but Italian people <clears throat> marry and mate with with uh, Irish people, with German people, without any problem. They have these little little you know Chinatown and whatever, but that don't uh, prevent some Chinese girl from dating and marrying some white dude. That don't stop that. Because in the end, when people get in the environments with each other, when we talk about, okay, well, I'm okay with working with white people and making money with, with Asian people, but I don't think we should get together. And I think that belies what actually happens no, with people. No, nobody because typically... No, no, I don't nobody think we're saying that. Over. That's not what we're saying. Yeah, we're not so, saying well, that. but what I, but what I'm saying, well, so what? So I mean, then it's like you're kind of being intellectually duplicitous no, because, because no, 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 no. So check it out. What check happened? It out. Check it out. So the people do a group economics. Yeah, and then the people who want to get together naturally just do that naturally. Nothing's forced. Nothing's. There's no external conditions. No yeah. outside anybody putting anything on so, you. So so then and there is no the majority segregation. of the group. And then what so you're talking no about racial is the people, segregation. Roger, and then what you're talking about is people who actually decide to, you know, maybe maybe date and marry out. Nothing wrong with that. Then they just fall in the group that they date and marry under. That's it. And what, well, yeah. once you once you marry now, it's essentially permanent or at least semi permanent for the most well, part. Because when you when you when you interracially when you interracially marry or date, one of y'all going to get absorbed. Either you're going to get absorbed to the black, or she she going to get absorbed to the blacks, or you're going to get absorbed to the Asians. Yeah, that's all that really happens, and and that's a point. That's well, and that's a free choice that they're making. So nobody's forcing that. See, I don't I don't have any issue with that. But I, I, but the way things play out is just naturally most other people of the same group are going to get together, and there's always going to be a small group that just kind of okay. Well, I don't mind being with this group because I like this culture and what they're doing over here, and I like this man or woman, and I'm gonna go on over there, and then you just assimilate and become part of that group. Now you got to work that out. See that that's that, see now that because depending on which group you go into. Usually, if you assimilate into uh, a black group, then you're usually okay. Now, if you go into another group and you're black, then that you might have some issues over there. That's what you. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on what group you're talking about, because you know, from what I've observed, you know, particularly amongst my younger kin, you know, there's there's still black guys. They still operate like black guys. But here's the thing: at the same time, they they're Latino wives do operate like Latino wives, and they kind of blend in both of their cultures. You know, they attend churches and you know various different functions. So it's not necessarily that one is entirely absorbed into the culture of the other. I guess it depends on where you are. I guess if you you're in Japan, for example, and you're a black person. You, you probably are going to be absorbed in the Japanese culture if you marry someone Japanese, because just by the sheer volume and preeminence of, of the people and the dominance of the, of the culture within that country and, and the rather insular nature of Japan in particular. But I foresee over time people blending together. I, I foresee over time the cultural aspects of people blending together. Where they eating collard greens on Monday and enchiladas on Tuesday, you know that that's what I foresee. People left to their own devices. That's yeah, so crazy. interesting that that exact the example you just gave us with the black and Latinos, well, black Americans and Latinos, right? That actually makes sense because yeah. those, those two racial groups are actually the closest to each other, despite the despite the cultural differences. We're the, we're actually closer to them, and they're closer to us. Um, as it relates to culture. Now, if you're talking black and Asian, now you got, you know, there's there's some you know cultural crossover there that that something's probably gonna get lost there. You might I think learn. it depends on I think that depends on which Asian. Asian. It depends on what you're talking Asian. To, if you're talking about the white Asians or the black Asians. You it depends because if you're talking if you're talking Chinese, your children will become Chinese. If you're talking Filipino, mm -hmm. then your children will become American. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, yeah. And see, that's true. I, I do believe. That's, in, in fact, there's a higher possibility your children still remain black if, if they're Filipino. That's kind of what I've seen. Yeah. Or Thai, or Thai, or something like that. But we know, like, Japanese and Chinese people is like the white people. Are Asian. Yeah, I remember a, a young lady when I was growing up, her name was Denise. Um, I still remember, you know, I almost say her last name, Denise. And uh, she was black and Asian. And I, I just saw, I just assumed she was black. Cause that's how she behaved. Uh, but yeah, I, I just kind of wanted to make that point as it relates to what Roger was talking about. And as it relates to the topic of the, of the, of the, uh, the, the broadcast is that I don't really see anything wrong with it. As a matter of fact, you guys know that there are black enclaves, you know, all over the United States. It's a little known fact. I'm, I'm kind of glad that it's little known in the sense that, you know, we know when something gets well known, how it kind of gets treated as it relates to black people. But there's a lot of, Little black enclaves, not little, you know, black, or, or, or at least primarily black. I'll just say that. Not all black, primarily black. And when I say that, I'm talking 65 to 70 percent, you know, enclaves all over the United States. Some of them are damn near, you know, 90 percent plus. Uh, and they're doing fine. Middle class, uh, middle to upper class, uh, you know, primarily families, all that other stuff. So no issues and problems, very low to no crime. Uh, so that that is happening, and people are doing that naturally because that's what they want to do. As a matter of fact, you guys know about the, pe the group of families that bought that land down in Georgia and started their own town. Yeah, they got yeah. scared. That wasn't real. Well, they're offering. Check, <laughs> they this out. Here's, check this yeah. out. Here's the rules. They're saying other people are invited, but they're saying, look, it's going to be a black focused town. So that kind of so that's. So when people hear that, they're like, wait a minute, what do you mean black focus? Well, there's just what we said. It's going to be a black focus, black run, black, black, black. But you can come down here if you want. We can't because they can't technically keep anybody out because what happens is people try to sue and try to take them to court and say, now you're you know, now you're uh, excluding me based on race. So this, but but they can actually force the culture. They can do that. They can say, look, everything down here is going to be black, black, all black, everything. So if you want to come on down here and be different. But you're going to get a black education. You're going to get a black this, a black that, all black everything. That's what you're going to get, and that's kind of what's keeping people out. That's why it's, you know, mo that's why it's black, all black today. S sounds like a great place to me. Uh, <laughs> now, <laughs> I want to say, see, and this is why I think when we start to think of cultures and and who's doing what, you got to start really looking at stuff from a man's perspective. If you marry out. The, who, whatever the man is, that's the culture that needs to absorb you. So if you're a white woman and you marry a black man, you need to be absorbed by black people. Now, is that going to be difficult for a white woman? No. Now, if you are a, a a black woman, you marry a white man, well, you need to be absorbed by white folks. Is that going to be difficult? <laughs> Probably ain't going to be as easy <laughs> as, the, as the white woman who who's getting absorbed by the black folks. It's probably not going to be as easy, but, you know, that's y'all business at the end of the day because the dude is white, so therefore it's not it's none of my business. That's y'all. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. This is, this is going to be the issue. You're going to have a hard time convincing Ado's men that we're part of any group, black or otherwise. You know, I like, honestly, I don't look like, that black shit don't mean nothing to me no more. Like, that, that shit don't mean nothing. It's just, it's just the color of my skin. Like, there's nothing else to be prideful of over that. Like, I, I believe that we're a great group of people. What do you people. mean, sir? I, I believe that. What I mean by that is that I believe that we're a great group of people. Don't don't get me wrong, but being black in itself don't mean nothing but my skin is black. Uh, you like, the other up. black people, the other black people don't give a fuck. Like, nigga, Nigerians don't give a fuck about African Americans. Kenyans don't give a fuck that you black. South Africans don't give a fuck that you black. Like they don't give a fuck about that shit. Did yeah, the Houthis well, give a fuck well, that the, did the Houthis give a fuck that the Tutsis was black? No, no they did not. You can't use them as an example. You can't use the Houthis and the Tutsis because remember there was external forces. Okay, well, okay, external forces did the when the wait, Congolese wait. was selling niggas. Wait, did they give a wait, fuck that the niggas they were selling was black? Hey, hey, hey! This is the thing in America. I, I, your group matters because America makes it makes a very good effort to make sure people understand that the group you belong to matters at the end of the day. No, most That's definitely. America is. made me understand that my group that, matters to me. Nobody else give a fuck about my group or nobody else holds the idea.
Well, so so, gee, that that's fine if nobody else cares. Yeah, but it's the ideology cares. that black is unity. Nobody else holds that ideology okay, but, that black is unity. What's that? And this, and this and this is the thing when we as black men stop looking at black inclu inclusive of or through the way women see it, you get a whole different result. Because honestly, I didn't say it plenty of times, you know. And I got the idea from Black Rule. It was a great idea when I heard it the first time. It's still a great idea now. You got to separate the men from the women. And we have to accept that the men determine what a culture is. Because I've said many times, once you remove a, a group of men, the culture no longer exists. That's just a fact. History has proven that time and time again. As soon as you remove, remove the men, that group of people no longer exists. So what Black men have to understand is we are our group about what the woman is you marry anybody you want to that woman is, it has has an invitation into our group by a black man marrying her that's just the way that's the way it works and we need to treat it that way and if we treat it that way and we really understand the separation of uh you know what I, what I talk about the respectable productive um uh what uh, uh respectable productive functional black men's community our wives and our children, which is different than the dysfunctional single mother community, then we we need, we start to understand what side of the fence we need to be on, who we need to group with. See, if we group together and our women is rolling with us, our children that live in our homes are rolling with us, and you start to identify what the black community actually is. We, due to white supremacy, when we think about black culture, we think about the small, worst part of our group which nobody else does because it's silly and it's stupid. But we've been trained to do that. It is what it is. And that's why I say stupidity is a choice. I don't have to look at the worst of us and the smallest amount of us and say, that's us. I get they put it on TV every day. <laughs> I get it's, it's being pushed through social media as well. But I don't have to accept that because I don't look at any other group and say that's who they are. We look at the best of people and say that's who they are. I can do that with my own people too. So my thing is, yeah, the women don't matter as much. But when will we accept that the women don't matter as much? And see, if you did segregation, even socially based on men, I think the issues that we're concerned with ain't really that big a concern. Because, I mean, earlier y'all were saying, well, who wants to be grouped with these women? The women don't count. The, we, we count you in when you're married to, to, the, to the respectable, productive, functional black man. If you ain't married to one of them, you, I mean, why, why am I concerned with that woman anyway? So, you know, black men got to make some hard stances on things. And if black men segregated socially, and now who's segregating with us? Our wives and our children. Black community starts to look real good real fast. Everybody else gets that. Have you, you know, guys seen you, that movie? Uh, uh, Doggone, what's the name of this? It's, it's, it's like a dystopian movie series. Uh, it's not The Hunger Games. It's another one. And I forget what it's called. Doggone it. I, I already forget. But what I do know about the series is that what you learn from the very beginning is that everybody's separated into specific groups based on the talents. Now, you can grow up as a child in a different group. And then once you return, become of age, then you get to choose. And that's based on your talents. Oh, you're talking about divergent. It's called divergent. That's what it is. Yeah. And and anybody. And what I noticed was that and you had a group of people who are. So everybody belonged to one of the five groups. OK. And then you have people on the outside. They were just basically the strags and they just kind of roamed the earth and nobody claimed them. And they just kind of had to survive on their own. And they did. a uh, And they did it based a lot on the kindness of other groups. But even the other groups wouldn't accept. And they're like, look. You're not part of the group. I'm going to help you only because I feel sorry for you, but you can't come into the group. And you had the five in groups and then you had that one out. group. So that's kind of what Roger is talking about. Uh, yeah, you the divergence. Of group. Yeah, that's what it is. It's divergence. But, but this, this, is what, too. Yeah. This, yeah. this is what I'm saying, though. Like everybody mistaken. Like, I don't know what I'm talking about. I know that I'm different than a Guyanese person or a person from Ghana or Nigeria our Congo, our Sierra Leone, our Burkina Faso, I am different than them. No matter how I see myself in my own Eidos construct, I would see them as black, like my brothers too. That's how we've been taught as Eidos. That is not how other people, black people think about us. 
I don't care what nobody finna say to me. I grew up with Africans. They do not think we are them. I don't care what nobody finna say. You can't tell.